Good morning. Um, at Aspen Heights Micro Society, um, we are very proud to be invited to TED Talks today. It's uh, a great accomplishment for our school. And uh, I just want to give you some background information first about uh, what, we're going to, what we're doing at Aspen Heights, and then I'm going to introduce my special guest. Um, the excitement surrounding As uh, Micro Society has changed me forever and given me a perspective on teaching and how students learn. Not only has Micro Society had an impact on our students, but it has directly impacted our teaching staff. I've been teaching since 1985, and as my students clearly tell me every year, at the start of every year, geez, Mr. Bailey, you're old. And they are perfectly honest. They're always honest with me. The value of making a difference is challenged every day at Aspen Heights. Hopefully, I can explain how we at Aspen Heights are making a difference. We are pushing the boundaries, and uh, I think that difference and the ability to change things in education is really important today. I'm proud to say that uh, uh, this is my family, and my wife is a kindergarten teacher, and she's been teaching kindergarten for 27 years. Uh, my God, that's a challenge every single day, hour, and minute that you're with these little guys. Uh, 25 students living, breathing, soaking up every word that you say, let alone the coughing, sneezing, nose-picking, and bathroom lessons that need to be taught to these students as well. When she, the first time I saw her teaching, she said, okay, it's time to line up. It was total chaos. So you, I'm amazed every year with her dedication and perseverance with these students. This is my uh, daughter, Janine, and my son, Lauren. And uh, my daughter, Janine, is teaching uh, grade two at Oriel Park, and that's my son, Lauren. And he's in his second year of education, so teaching is in our blood. As I was contemplating um, just what to do uh, and how TED Talks happens to coincide with uh, Micro Society, I realized it was more about educational reform and change than just talking about Micro Society. It's about changing the way education is approached. I truly believe Micro Society is one of those vehicles that we can use to change our educational system. Does it need changing? Absolutely it does. No longer is it in the best interest of our students to be sitting at their desk with a paper and pencil and being graded using standardized tests. Life today changes so quickly that we need to think forward and think of new experiences for our students. One example is a town hall meeting I had last year with our Micro Society students. There were 35 students that came and they shared their views on education and Micro Society. Can you imagine grade one to five students sharing their views? This is really forward thinking and I think that the students that came were really excited to share their ideas. Not too many teaching staffs would be willing to hear what grade one to five students have to say. There were 35 students, like I said, in the audience. I told them that I was just a moderator. Uh, I was just going to record everything, and for me, that was really hard because I said I wasn't going to say anything. Two themes came out of our meeting. One was that they said that they love micro society. And the question was posed to them by another student is why? And they said, because we're not sitting at our desk during micro society, we get to make our own decisions and solve our own problems. The next one was, why doesn't every micro society, why every school doesn't have a micro society program? I couldn't answer that question. Hopefully, things will change. I'm a big fan of Steve Jobs. Steve Jobs has some incredible quotes. quotes and I think educational reform, and his quotes here on the crazy ones, he says, here's to the crazy ones, the misfits, the rebels, the troublemakers, the round pegs and the square holes, the ones who see things differently, because the ones who are crazy enough to think they can change the world are the ones who do. And I think that we have to continually think about how we can change education. Too many years we've stagnated, we need to change the way that we approach education. I think that micro society is one of those crazy vehicles that we can use to change the way students are taught. 
According to Donlan Miller, she says, the purpose of school should not be to prepare students for more school. We should be seeking to engage them and not having them sit at their desk. So, what is this revolutionary microsite program? Before I carry on, oh, Mr. Williams, you're not supposed to be in this picture yet. We'll come back to you. He's always trying to get a mug shot in here every once in a while. So, we're going to come back to you, Mr. Williams, in a few minutes. All right. So, before I explain that, I just want to talk about a very important gentleman, and that is George Richmond. George Richmond is the founder of Micro Society, and he started his Micro Society program in 1967 in an inner city school in Brooklyn, New York. He was in a very difficult situation in his teaching career. First year teacher, grade five, inner city New York, and he was in tough. There were some hardcore kids, and he had to try to deal with those kids and try to make them tr learn about what life was like. He said, I can stay the way I am and teach the old traditional way, or I can make changes. He did that. And just to quote a few things from George Richmond, he said, it's easy to forget that not too long ago, our children did authentic work on the farm, in the family businesses, and in the home. Their contributions were essential and valued. Today, however, he said that adults and children alike have come to define childhood as an extended period of recreation. Teachers are expected to make learning fun, and too many children spend their time after school in meaninglessly, meaningless pursuits, such as watching television, playing video games, and just hanging out. We expect these children then to turn around and become productive adults as if by magic. Our expectations are unrealistic. If children are become contributors to our society, they may, must develop a work, work ethic and experience the joys of meaningful and authentic work at an early age. George believed that these were the main components of micro society. We need to include tech, technology in our schools. We need to teach about economics, what it is like to be in the real world. Academy, we need to teach the kids that there's more things beyond the walls of our school. Citizenship, hugely important. And at Aspen Heights, I'm going to share with you in a little bit, and so is my special guest, about citizenship, humanities, and of course, having a heart. And we teach these things to our students at Aspen Heights. He also said that what our students deserve is the opportunity to discover that they are capable and making legitimate contributions to our society. Deserve the opportunity to discover that beneath their desire to take, there is a desire to give. We need to allow our students to become stakeholders in their own life. So I'm going to backtrack just a little bit in this Mr. Williams. Mr. Williams was our first micro society coordinator at Aspen Heights. And the way this all started a number of years ago, actually almost seven years ago now, is Mr. Williams and I were sitting in the computer lab and we were talking about the apathy and unmotivated students that we had at Aspen Heights. And I turned to him and I said, Mr. Williams, we got to do something. And he said, you know what, Alan? He said, it's time to look at some programs I've been researching. So he showed me some of these programs. He said, look at this on the internet. Here's some information. He passed it on to me. And I said, um, yeah, let's jump on it. No, actually, I didn't. Uh, my students always want me to tell the truth. Uh, it was almost a year um, before I said, hey, Milt, this micro society program looks really cool. I think it would be a good program to get involved in. So the ground swelling movement began. Milt and I had to convince our teaching staff first, and then we had to convince our administration. Isn't that something unique? We started with our teaching staff first. We decided that it was best to get people on our side first and then approach our administration to get this program into our school. This is where it started. We started convincing our staff members. So as part of the convincing of the administration, seven staff members 
went down to San Diego and visited two schools. We went to Chula Vista and Joiner School. After, those, after that visit, we were absolutely sold. This was the program for our school. This program requires incredible dedication from our teaching staff, and they have shown it over and over again that they are willing to implement micro-society at Aspen Heights. We officially became a micro-society school in 2009. So, I'm going to start, and I'm going to show you some slides. It's very visual. We need to give you, my special guest and I, a visual of what it's like to be at Aspen Heights and be involved in our micro-society program. It starts off every year voting. We first started off with manual ballots. Mr. Williams and I would be sitting after the ballots when the voting was done, and we'd be counting ballots, crazily counting ballots, because the kids wanted to know like this. So we introduced some technology, and Mr. Bales got to go to a photography class. We have a, uh, a uh, Big Pix uh, technology, and they keep on telling Mr. Bale, your pictures are horrible, and yes, Mr. Bale's pictures are horrible. So he's headed off to Photography 101. And we introduce technology with the help of staff members. We vote online, grade ones all the way to grade five. And we have an election where we elect a prime minister and a deputy prime minister. And in every classroom, they are electing members of parliament. Voter turnout was high. They're lined up, ready to go. I'm in there calling the next class. The kids rotate through. They vote on who they would like to see as their prime minister and deputy prime minister. After the election, okay, we have an oath of office. This is Judge Jim Mitchell, and he is swearing in our prime minister from last year, and this is Mackenzie Ryan, and he has been involved with us now for five years, and he makes it a really big show, and uh, he makes it really important. We get dignitaries in there, and this is Judge Mitchell. This is the entire government. They've all been sworn in. Our RCMP liaison officer is there. We try to invite it and make it as official as possible. Our deputy prime minister and our prime minister are very important in our micro-society. They are basically introducing and they are our guests. Okay, sorry, they uh, help with all of our guests as they come through and they are tour guides. So they are very important. Um, First ever business venture was sold, and you can see on the left, a grade three and a grade two student bought Penguin Avenue food vendors. This was really an interesting concept for us as kids. Kids were managers up to this point, and now all of a sudden they become owners of these business ventures. And so this is Penguin Avenues. It was sold to two girls, a grade three and a grade two student. The grade two student who is now in grade three said, I don't want to, I'm gonna sell my business. So now the grade three student owns all of Penguin Avenue. Uh, we're off to job fair. Job fair is a huge deal. We get everybody together. They're, they make their posters. Uh, we bring everybody in. We've had the, the Alberta government and some of their officials come in to tour. They're quite impressed. This is the uh, owner and manager of a venture called Busy Beavers. They do carpentry work. And uh, you can see that they're eager and ready to go and ready, ready for people, uh, the students, to come and visit them at their booth. Hey, this is a real wrench. Yes, it is. Again, this is at Busy Beavers, and this is Addison, and he's the owner. And he graduated to grade six, so he had to sell his business. And two young girls in grade three bought his business from him. Uh, Peekaboo, come to my booth for the job fair. I love this one. This is Miss Brianna. She was the, uh, the uh, owner at one time of Penguin Avenue, and she sold it. And she's trying to get some people to come in. It's really interesting how important micro-society is to us and how language is, is paramount. These two boys are conversing about jobs that they would like to apply for. So after the job fair, they have to make a decision. Which job do I want to apply for? And then the interview process begins. And this is a hectic time at Aspen Heights. We have our job fair. A week later, we go right into interviews with our students. And the students... Just love this. Now, this is Brianna. She's ready to hire and interview some of the students. And each of our students is uh, given the opportunity to fill out a resume and a job application form. And then they submit it to each of the ventures. And then they have an interview 
with each of the owners and managers. This is Saxon. She's a manager of Helping Hearts this year. She did a great job interviewing some of our younger students and asking, asking them what their skills are. And uh, it was kind of interesting, some of the answers they gave them. Some of the kids are just, yeah, they're just mesmerized that they're even in an interview. So we're trying to coach the kids how to be uh, involved in an interview and how to conduct an interview as well. So then we're off after the everyone has a job and everyone is employed at Micro Society from kindergarten all the way to grade five. And this year, for the first time, all of our kindergarten students are placed in a venture. Um, we have courses, we call it Micro University. We have Management 101, Bookkeeping 101, and Business Basics 101. All of our owners and managers go to Management 101, Bookkeeping, of course, our accountants, bookkeepers, and then everyone else in our school goes to Business Basics. This is Management 101. I can be honest with you, I am not a business person. If anybody wants to come in and take over for me, please do. I would love for you to come in and teach, all right? Uh, this is Business Basics 101. Some of our teachers, uh, you can see a large group. We're trying to give them some background. We're trying to tell them how do you write a check? How do you have a, a bank account? How do you keep track of your bank account? We're trying to teach them what goods and services are, what wants and needs are. And so we're trying to teach them as much as we can about the economy. This is Bookkeeping 101. Community volunteers are really important. And this is some of the volunteers from Service Credit Union coming in teaching the kids about bookkeeping. All of our bookkeeping in the last two years is done online. We all have the kids using now Google Documents in order to keep track of their bookkeeping. Our bookkeepers are really important. They have to keep track of not only the business bookkeeping, but each of the individual students' accounts as well. The students at any time, from grade kindergarten all the way to grade five, can go into the computer lab and check how much they have in their bank account. As part of our micro university, the mo owners and managers have to have a business license and a goals and expectation sheet posted outside their ventures before they can open. There's always the panic. And the panic is coming next week when we have our first production meeting. And these all have to be prepared and put outside each of the business ventures. Check writing is a big, it's not as important. We're looking at different ways. We want to modernize our micro society and make it more relevant. Check writing, when we first started six years ago, all the students had a, a bundle of checks. Now they have like three or four or five checks in their little pouches. They barely write them. They go to the bank, they withdraw their money. Okay. Community events. We have a lot of different community events and we attend all of those. Okay. Cherry Sweet Jewelry, a new venture that was opened this year. Market Day at the bank. They're all going up and they're withdrawing their mi uh, money. Sorry, Getting the message out. Kids are allowed to go in the hallway and try to get different people to their businesses. We have a lot of different special guests coming in. This is Marianne Jablonski. Uh, Mayor Tara Veer is an alumni of Aspen Heights and has been there a number of times. And she's excited when she visits us. Our superintendent also has visited our school on a number of occasions. And who's this guy in the funny suit, okay? What I'd like to do at this time is invite a very special guest up to the stage. And she is going to explain some of her experiences as a student and what she has experienced through Micro Society. So if I could have Ms. Dylan Jurek please come forward. Is that it? Okay. Okay. Hello everyone. My name is Dylan and I'm a proud alumni of Aspen Heights School and Micro Society. Although I have to tell this almost didn't even happen. You see, my mom works at Aspen Heights and for years all I heard her talk about was Micro Society. So one day I skipped school so I could go and see this in, this in action. After that I made the decision to change schools the next year just so I could experience this amazing pr program. I was hired as the manager of Helping Hearts, our nonprofit charitable foundation that finds ways to fundraise and bring awareness to important community needs in Red Deer and around the world. Through popcorn sales, we were also able to give grants to ventures in need of extra funding. 
I had an amazing year learning how to manage my staff, delegate duties, organize events, and handle requests for check for grant applications, call to set up check presentations for the Canadian Cancer Society. I was even responsible for calling and booking our limo for our field trip. In Microsoft, we are not just playing a giant game of make believe. We are learning real life skills that we will all need as we grow older. Think about it. How many kids do you know that are learning how to write, write checks and balance their bank books? How many kids do you know that earn a wage, pay taxes, or even get to vote and attend business and production meetings? I think all schools should have a program like Micro Society because it brings real le life to learning Th that w makes learning fun. Math, language arts, and social studies and problem solving are no longer things we're just reading about. We're doing it. Kids that experience Micro Society build confidence in themselves and their ideas, learn about their communities, learn how to, about democracy, learn to solve problems on their own, experience entrepreneurship and the successes and failures that go along with running a business. I am so honored to be here today to share this amazing experience with you. I gotta cut it short, so you're okay. okay. Now, I just want to say a few more words about Dylan really quickly. She is a, uh, an award-winning student. Um, we have 251 micro society schools worldwide, and Dylan was selected um, as a student leader and selected last year out of all of those schools as an award winner. So we're really proud of Dylan and the work she's done at micro society. Okay, uh, just a few closing words. I know we're running out of time. You know, I'm the typical teacher. I'm uh, overprepared and have way too many slides. And uh, so just quickly, I'd just like to say we're really big into recycling at our school and everything is tied. You wouldn't believe how much we're tied in to everything within our school. We always think, what, what is it with micro society? How can we tie it in with micro society? These are some of our ventures that we have um, and some of our students. Our city, uh, center city for our grade Ks, really important. They're playing a lot. So we're incorporating all of our students. This is our new technology venture, okay? And uh, this is some of our smoothies. So you can see that we are very active at Aspen Heights. We really enjoy micro society. I wish I could share more, but I'm running out of time. And uh, if you have uh, any questions, please ask us about micro society. We are so thrilled and passionate about our program. And you can see the effect that it's had on our students. So I want to thank you for being here today. <laughs>